Um, what is the Federal Reserve promoting or proposing to improve Puerto Rico's banking sector and to improve the local economy? Right. So I think from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York's perspective, I mean, importantly, we care about the, how you know the economy is performing across uh, the country, across the district, which includes uh, uh, here. So I, part of the our focus is really about economic development, community development, uh, having more prosperous, resilient uh, economies uh, throughout the island. Uh, our focus, in terms of the work we do, is both in sharing information, data, analytics, information about the economy with various stakeholders, but also this convening, uh, convening ability to bring together the various groups and discuss how, uh, what the opportunities are to invest in the economy here, uh, under, uh, you know, whether lenders or investors who are looking for opportunities to invest, and the, obviously the businesses and the, the other groups here, bringing them together uh, so that, you know, they can, uh, Work on building investments in, in, in the local economy. One of the required, one of the laws that we uh, oversee is the Community Reinvestment Act, Act, which is really about helping. You know, our role is to, to help bring uh, people who want to land and invest in the communities uh, together with uh, the various parties who can benefit from that. So that's some of our main uh, activities here. Um, yeah, you mentioned this thought about the importance of credit to the economy, and I wanted to ask you about the PROMESA process, how you think that's going, and whether, you know, sort of resolving the debt, debt issue is very important, and also whether, you know, uh, there was all these concerns that initially about PROMESA bleeding into the, the larger municipal market, mm -hmm. and uh, there's been some decisions at the First Circuit level that might have an impact in a broader market, and the, just the fact that, you know, GOs are still like an, is, an open issue here, just if you could talk about if you think that there is an impact on the broader sure. market. Sure, and you know, I, I, I just take a step back that even, you know, if you asked this question, you know, four or five years ago, the issue about how to get the the government and these various entities on a sustainable path was critically important. It was this is an issue that's been around for a long time, um, and you know when I talk to people, or, you know, business leaders or or others, I mean what they tell me all the time is what we need is clarity, transparency, and certainty around this. So I don't think we're there yet, partly because of some of the legal uncertainties and partly because some of the decisions still need to be made, and it's not sure you know clear completely how that will work. I do think that getting to a point where everybody can see that, that uh, the country and these different uh, organizations are on a sustainable path that will work for the future decades, I think will be a big benefit uh, to, to the local economy. We're not there yet, and I'm not gonna opine on any of the particular decisions, those aren't my decisions, but I do think that success, if I could say what does success look like, it looks like um, the situation where uh, you know, people who are looking at investing in this island or working here or, or building their businesses can say, hey, we're on a, uh, this is a path forward that's sustainable in terms of the debt, in terms of uh, uh, the future, you know, kind of path uh, on, on these decisions, and that uh, they understand, you know, what it looks like and, and can and make their decisions. One thing that's always true is that if you're not sure about very basic things like this, it's very hard to make, you know, longer term investments, whether you're talking about buy, building a business or buying a house or whatever. So I think that to me, getting, getting uh, people have confidence that, that these issues have been resolved in a way that puts on a sustainable path and obviously that people have that certainty are, are really important. And, and any wider thing on the municipal market, do you think this situation is maybe impacting lending and municipal markets or not? In general? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's hard to see that. I, I think in general, I'm not an expert on all of the, the mini market in general, but uh, overall, but uh, you know, I, it's not obvious signs of that. Okay. It's, a, it's actually an interesting observation that uh, that's always the concern. As these, these issues become resolved, how will that spill over into investor sentiment and things? And so far, I don't think there's been a big effect. Okay. Thank you for your time. You've mentioned repeatedly there how important it is for Puerto Rico to rebuild. Right. And the truth is that in the case of the United States Virgin Islands, in the case of Puerto Rico, the pace of recovery is certainly lagging. Right. And it seems that federal funds are not getting here as fast as they should be. Um, what's your take on that and, and what kind of support or information you're providing to federal agencies to move 
at a faster pace. Sure, and again, I'm you know the my comment is that the, the, we don't control that. And <laughs> right. We're not FEMA. We're not other yes. agencies. And, uh, the, uh, but I do think that one of the important you know, lessons around these kind of incidents uh, is really about the need to move move quickly in multiple dimensions. We saw that at the Fed. It sounds like a little bit of a sidebar, but I think it's an example that we feel very strongly at the Fed is that there was a fear that uh, the island was going to run out of cash. Uh, you probably remember that. So at the New York uh, Fed, the San Francisco Fed, and our colleagues around the system, you know, we basically were you know, working 24-7 uh, to make sure uh, that the currency was available on the island, despite the fact that the infrastructure uh, was in a very bad state, uh, and, but also because the, you know, people couldn't uh, use uh, you know, a lot of lack of electricity and things like that was meaning that card networks and things weren't available. And so, you know, the, the lesson there is, you know, the faster you move, the more aggressively you can move in to deal with the, the declines. I think that helps people and it helps uh, things from getting worse. In terms of uh, this issue of the bounce back of, uh, uh, of the two, or the lack of a bounce back, if you will, uh, of the two economies, I think what we see here is not only the issue that you're raising, like, you know, got to get the you know the money into the economy quicker and decisions made quicker but there's also this interaction between what was going on beforehand and the actual uh, in this case you know these are hurricanes but so the US Virgin Islands and one of the questions is you know this this is one that hasn't an economy that hasn't hasn't come back much at all and you know how do they kind of group build up from this base a, more, a stronger, kind of more resilient economy for the future. Clearly, they weren't well positioned for that then, um, and uh, and I think here the same the same question arises: How do you kind of design it or build uh, or uh, foster uh, an economy that's just much more much more resilient to whatever whatever the next thing the next thing is? Um, that's why I think it gets back to some of these longer term issues about what you know what's going to be the economic base of, of the country what's the you know uh, the education and infrastructure investments that, that are made. Hi um, I have a quick question earlier this year we had a, a consulting firm put out a report where they mentioned that uh, the Puerto Rico's changing economic landscape would prompt banks to keep a tight grip on their activities they called it a retrenching um, and they mentioned because um, you know, there was a, uh, they, they identified uh, loan payment delinquencies and a shrinking population as ongoing risks. Right. You know, would you have some sort of um, a take on, on this? Thing? Right, so I mean, I, I've, I've heard the same kind of uh, comments, and we definitely see that loan growth overall here has been relatively low in, in, uh, over the past several years. So I think thinking about that, I, I do think that the, the shrinking population obviously means just kind of by arithmetic, a slower growing economy, less loan growth. Um, now, we do know that uh, uh, defaults or delinquencies and things on, on loans here are higher than the national average. At the same time, banks can, can position themselves correct, you know, kind of appropriately for that. And so it, I guess the, my answer to your, to your question really is, is are we seeing a tightening of, of, of credit standards? And I'm not sure if that's been a big driver. I think it's more of a kind of a, a, a weakening of, of loan demand. Uh, obviously, though, there are lots of parts of this economy that are not banked or unbanked or underbanked as well. So I think that, you know, I keep going back to the issue is that, you know, I, it's, the banks are, you know, much stronger than they used to be here, uh, uh, than they used to be in, on the island. I think that you know they're in a good position to land in general. I, th I do think for a lot of small businesses, especially you know uh, micro or entrepreneurial style businesses, they're generally not going to be getting credit from banks. That would be true throughout the United States, not just here. So that's so I, I I've heard these kind of narratives. I think a lot of it is just is relatively slow growth in in uh, demand for loans, but obviously there are other parts of the the economy that just don't have access to, to more. Okay, and during your presentation, like I mentioned to you, there was somebody who was watching right. on Facebook Live, and he has a question. Okay. His name is James Arroyo. He asks, will a PSD2, or Revised Payment Service Directive, similar to the European Union, be implemented in the U.S.? 
So that's a really interesting question. Boy, the... Uh, <laughs> that's why I wanted to ask that. <laughs> so this is really about uh, the modernization of the payment system. So a lot of people, when they think about how they pay for things, so if you, you, know, you might think about using a credit card or your debit card, or you might think that when you tap your phone that you're actually making a payment. Actually, what you're doing is sending a message to have a payment be made through some other system. Um, and so one of the things that we've seen in Europe, which is you know what you're talking about, but also in other countries, uh, uh, including Australia and elsewhere, is uh, pretty significant efforts about creating more modern or what we often call real-time uh, payment system. So that if I if I send you ten dollars, it's actually ten dollars that leaves my account and goes into your account, so you can then pass it on. So I think from uh, the uh, you know the Federal Reserve, we are very uh, very much. Uh, uh, interested and focused on how do we come up with a, a more modern set of payment systems. We have actually put that out for comment and have uh, been, uh, uh, you know, reviewing that. Uh, and there's obviously a lot of innovative activity out there about thinking about creating new payment uh, systems. A lot of this is to, I think, to replace checks. You know, by the way, a check for anyone who's uh, younger than me is a piece of paper. <laughs> you write a person's name on, you write a dollar amount, and you sign it, and that's the money. Um, so, you know, so I, I don't have an answer to that question because those are things or decisions that need to be made through a process. But I do think there's a lot of energy uh, in the U.S., not just at the Fed, but more generally, about really creating a new payment system um, that is takes advantage of the latest technology, uh, is much more real time and not delayed, like you have to wait a week for you check to clear. Um, the other, and, and also hopefully, you know, designed to be secure from a point of view of cybersecurity and fraud and, and things like that. The last time we introduced a real payment system in the U.S. that, you know, serves this kind of purpose, you would have to go back decades and decades to credit cards uh, and debit cards and things like that. So it's striking how, you know, in this realm of in this world of rapid technological change, this is one area that we haven't seen it happen until recently. Thank you. So one thing I always wonder about coming down here to Puerto Rico with the New York Fed um, over the last couple of years is there's always a lot of talk about getting the uh, fiscal situation on a sustainable path. Um, it seems like you know if the profession learned anything since the crisis or relearned anything, it's that you know austerity can be incredibly counterproductive when you have an economy in a situation like this. So how do you kind of square those two things? Right. So that's I think that was very much. So it's a, very much the debate, right, about some of this. Now, if you go back to before the hurricane, um, the debate was was really, if you're completely, you know, it's more about bankruptcy kind of process mm -hmm. rather than fiscal, you know, like I'm gonna, you're just thinking about in terms of how do I raise taxes and cut spending to, to balance it. And that's really what the process we've seen the last, I guess, several years now has been about. Um, and, you know, and I think about this, I always think about the, the two aspects of that. And, and the United States, by the way, is a, I'll use as an example about how sometimes people are focused on the wrong one. So for Puerto Rico, it really is about how do you get the debt that exists to be sustainable? How do you get a situation where just by math, you could pay this off in a way that doesn't require the economy to, to be lurch into a, a deep recession or something? The second question is how do you create an a, a environment and, a, and a, a situation where you don't recreate this problem in the future? So those are two separate issues. You, if, you, if you don't solve the first, you can't solve the second. But if you can get the debt on a sustainable path and in a, in a way that, you know, through a process that, that, uh, that satisfies these requirements that I mentioned earlier, then you can really think about, given that we're, we've gotten the initial conditions right, how do we make sure we stay on that sustainable path? So the United States is a good example, so I'm moving away from Puerto Rico. A lot of people say, well, why can't we do something that would make the, the debt, you know, why can't, you know, they'll say things like, why can't the Fed pay off the, the U.S. debt? Or something like, how can I make the U.S. debt go away? And the problem with that is, well, first of all, that's, you can't do that. But the problem in the U.S. is not the past debt. It's not the 75, 80 uh, percent of GDP of publicly held debt in the United States. That's one problem. The real problem is that we're building you know, uh, we're on an unsustainable path going forward in terms of deficits and, and growing debt. Uh, so when I think about sustainability, it's really about not only getting the, you know, the existing conditions in a place where at least you can manage it, but it's also really shifting kind of the longer run trajectory go, going forward. So going back to Puerto Rico, I mean, I think that the, you know, the, the hard, they're both hard parts, but if you can't get this first part right, then, you know, you can't really deal with, uh, with kind of a sustainable uh, 
uh, path going forward. In terms of the short run, long run issues, I mean, I, I think what you said is right. I mean, if you try to do something, you know, in the short run, this creates some pain, uh, obviously, uh, but uh, in the long run, creates, I think, a, a stronger kind of foundation uh, for, for growth uh, in terms of getting on a sustainable path. Sorry about the mix up here. Could you, would you mind, so that sure. we can get better sound? Um, thank you for supporting the island and launching Codefi. Um, what does the Codefi progression model in Puerto Rico have in order to attract financial institutions of the mainland US uh, to be interested in funding community de development of our islands? So I think that you know the important part is, is we're trying to put all the pieces uh, uh, together. Uh, so one of the pieces is really uh, uh, listening. So part of this process in, uh, in the, on the island is listening to the stakeholders, hearing what are the issues that people are facing, what are the problems that need to be solved, you know, where are the, sh where are the uh, shortfalls in terms of funding, and, and what are the opportunities. So first, the first thing we've been doing, and I, it's basically through the first three months of the year, so coming close to completion, is this listening tour of understanding what's happening in the island in terms of where the opportunities are, where some of the, the missing pieces are. The next, the, the really the next part of this is, is to develop further the ability uh, of the various stakeholders to understand uh, what what are the, you know how to bring them together in terms of convening in terms of uh, uh, really having a, a much better understanding across across these various groups of who are the players who are the people who would like you know, who want to be part of this process whether it's on the investor bank side whether it's on the other side really identifying and bringing together this broad set of stakeholders and, and, and groups and helping them uh, basically guide them in a way about thinking about how to be successful in this process so we don't we don't deploy resources we're not paying the money but we definitely can help people uh, come together and uh, understand how th this can work whether it's for CRA but also more generally about how to uh, uh, how you know to solve some of the problems that were identified earlier on and the final stage which is late this year and into next year is really about the connection the connection part getting them together working on on their own but we, you know again facilitating convening I always you know say that we, we provide the lunch and the, and the table but really it's about bringing people together and connecting them in a way that they're actually taking their, their action so you know I think that this progression model really is about getting all those pieces first of all identifying the problem bringing the people together getting them to be uh, catalyzing action around what they're going to do and then obviously in the end getting getting seeing the results of, of all of that so we don't want to parachute in in just one or the other we really want to build this whole you know kind of um, in infrastructure, if you will, around that. So what's success look like? I think a year from now, March next year, it would really be around this connect phase where we're saying, where the various stakeholders and participants in this are really able to you know, make the significant investments and participate with each other on these activities that, you know, whatever they are, these aren't our decisions, uh, that will uh, make a big difference for, for the economy. Uh, would you, oh, I'm sorry, this is going to be the last question. Yeah, we really don't know. Would you, would you regard a sustained undershoot on inflation um, as a reason to cut rates even if economic growth remains around target? And what do you make of Stephen Moore's comments that the September and December rate hikes were a mistake that should be reversed? So, um, I actually thought that this would be the first time in my career that I did not get asked about monetary policy. <laughs> that would have been a remarkable event in my career. Uh, but and that said, uh, so the uh, so on on the first question is we have you know first pers speaking personally, uh, but I you know we I I take very seriously both of our dual mandate objectives: the maximum employment. The price stability. I think right now we're pretty close on both unemployment below four percent. That's really good. I think that's close to, you know, about as close to price, uh, maximum employment as you know, we've ever been. And on the on the price stability, inflation has been running uh, just a touch below the two percent goal. So from my point of view, monetary policy is well around neutral in terms of the short term interest rate. The economy is growing roughly a trend. So those initial conditions are pretty good. We're close to our goals. So how do I think about policy going forward? Well, given that the initial conditions are pretty good, I think policy is well, well positioned where it is, then clearly any development in the economy, whether it's on the employment side 
or on the inflation side that moved, you know, in a in a pers in a, in a persistent way away from our objectives uh, would uh, one way or the other uh, would uh, be a reason to th rethink the path of policy going forward, or, re or be a, uh, inputs into thinking about what the path of policy going forward. So your specific question was a sustained, you know. Um, undershoot of our inflation objective going forward if that was viewed as if I viewed that as um, being the the baseline outlook with the current level of interest rates then obviously I would think in the context of all the things that are going on as a, as a, a factor in thinking about is it or we still have policy in the right place you know on the other hand if you know if the economy were to slow significantly obviously that would be another kind of a factor but both of them would be in, in important for me uh, the second question was uh, Stephen Moore's comments. Of the I'm September, not December, yeah. So I actually haven't state. seen the, uh, the comments. I've been traveling here, and, and I'm obviously not going to comment another uh, any comments that people make about that. So I don't, I don't have anything.